Hey guys, welcome back to another whiskey review with Joel and Tim. We have the Ben Romac 21 year old, a really good well aged whiskey here. Becoming a little bit of a rarity these days, I guess, to see things with 21 year old age statements, let alone at a very fairly reasonable, I would say, price point. So stick around, see if it lives up to all that hype. Let's go for it. So I'm another one that I'm excited to try. This is obviously a distillery, but the distillery in the not too recent history got bought by an independent bottler. Um, but this is their own release. This is their original bottlings, obviously the independent bottler, which is Gordon McPhail, very yep. famous. We've yep. tried some of their stuff before. But I think what's really interesting about this distillery is even though they don't need to do it now, they kept doing and making a spirit in that way due to the tradition of the distillery and what used to happen in Speyside, which is when, you know, they were burning and they're drying out all their malt, after germinating it. Sometimes they would run out of coal, so they would have to actually put a little bit of peat in there. <laughs> so inadvertently, some Speyside whiskies ended up coming out a little bit smoky, purely because, you know, they just ran out of coal and they're like, oh, let's just chuck some peat in. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds efficient to me. Yeah, exactly. You know, work with what you've got. But these guys have kept doing that to, um, due to the tradition, so a little bit of a smoky one. So like I said, Everything we've tried so far, those two different other space side ones, again, something completely different, just goes to show what we're talking about before is that region sometimes doesn't really mean an awful lot. <laughs> exactly. And this 21 is going to be completely different to the first 21. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's what we're here for, right? Yeah. All right, let's get stuck into it. Beautiful colour again. Yeah. So this one uh, probably got some filtration going on there. Oh. oh wow. So I could smell that as I was pouring <laughs> it. I was just super excited. So this one, um, in terms of the cast type, because it's probably influencing what we're <laughs> smelling it quite a bit here. Um, again, it's a more traditional blend of sherry casks. Um, I'm pretty sure it's first fill. I'm pretty sure first fill sherry cask um, and ex bourbon. So I get the sense that this one might be a little bit more balanced between the two compared to the Ben Rinners we've tried, which yep. is a bit heavier on the sherry end of the spectrum. Absolutely. And there's, it's quite a oily yeah. smell to it. Definitely. And um, The peat is very, very subtle though. Yeah. It's very, very <clears throat> subtle. Very subtle on the peat. Uh, very strong on the orange citrus. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely like a good amount of the bourbon cask in this one versus the other one. Mm. The, the, the I think you do need that because it smells like the um, the first cask, the sherry cask, may have been overpowering. Yeah. Um, because 50-50 on ex bourbon, you're just using that to balance. If you do need 50%, then it's it's probably removing a lot of those tannins and kind yeah. of those flavour profiles that might be a little bit too astringent. Yeah. As we've tasted even in previous months, like when we've tasted, I don't know, the Lagavulin Distillers edition a few months back, um, you just see how much those sherry casks can really pull back and tame those smoky notes, but then kind of it's almost like they need the bourbon cask and then pull back the sherry cask a yep, little bit. Yep, so it's exactly. this very interesting balancing act. 100%. That's seriously tasty. Actually, there's more sherry casks coming a lot through more. than it's a what I thought. Bomb. Yeah. It is a sherry bomb. Even on, especially on the mm. finish, I get that same like really drying nuttiness, spiciness, um, the dark fruits. This is uh, sherry apple pie. <laughs> I think the difference is though for me, it's that really, it's not that sweet sherry like the no. PX or something like that. It's more like your Oloroso where it's got that really kind of, it's still very dry, but it's got that oxidated kind of character and to it. And that dryness is coming through at the end with all the like kind of black pepper yeah. um, following through. And that smokiness at the very end as well. But it is, it's, 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 play, it's playing a, a lot of different notes. Yeah, I'm getting so many toffee notes though. Like the toffee for me is just, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, it's toffee dipped in just a bucket of sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of like jammy kind of fruits as well. There's just so much going on. I like, I, to be honest, I wasn't expecting that. I kind of was thinking it would be 
a little bit smoky and that would kind of like overwhelm things a little bit more. Um, but again, we've just, they've done a stellar job here. Yeah, very much so. I mean, when you've got the uh, Gordon McPhail name behind you, you kind of do expect something pretty special. <laughs> well, I mean, this, this has to be before that time as well. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we're talking, you know, barrels that were laid at the very beginning of the 21st century. It's very early thousands at, yeah. uh, at best, <laughs> exactly. if not before. Yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of it also comes down to that skill of, you know, you can have terrible barrels, but if you manage to get that balance right, you can make something pretty amazing where the kind of sum is greater than the parts. Um, and I think that's like, you know, a lot of people don't appreciate actually sometimes making the whiskey is the easy part. Yeah. Because <laughs> You kind of make it the same recipe and do it the same every time. And as long as you maintain that consistency and the first product you developed is good, yeah. that's the, that's kind of oh, the, the craft relatively come, easy. Comes down to, to, to the blend, really. Exactly. Like after we're 21 not talking years, blended, we're talking yeah. single malt, but, but marriage of casks from the same distillery. Exactly. Yep, um, that's it. And you know, after 21 years, they've all had their different areas of the warehouse, different cask types whatever it may be, so they all come out completely different, then you've got to somehow put these back into something that resembles consistency. And I kind of feel like that's the real art. Like, I mean, it's hard, it, both aspects are hard. I'm not saying either is easy. I'm not saying it's harder, like it's easier if someone just does single cask releases and that's it. Um, but I'm saying there's definitely a lot of skill and artistry that goes into oh, yeah. those kind of blending processes. And it's, uh... It's an art versus a science yeah. with, with that part of the business, really. Yeah. Um, hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed that, please remember to leave a comment below. We'd love to know what you thought about this whiskey. If you do enjoy our channel, please remember to subscribe and you'll get notifications of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.